Hi everybody, I'm Terry Darty with the Mom's Choice Awards, and I'm here this morning with Lillian Hunter, award-winning author of Sam Solves a Problem. Welcome to the studio. Thank you, Terry. It's nice to be here. Is, have you enjoyed your first BEA? I have loved it. It's so much great energy. Everybody's happy. It's wonderful because everybody's here about books. It is. It's one of my favorite times of year. Now, let's talk a little bit about Sam. One of the things that I noticed in your book is that it's written in first person. So Sam is describing what's happening. Why was it important to you to write a first person book rather than have a narrator talking about what's happening? I wanted the child to actually engage with the story. That's part of why the drawings are look like they're drawing, driven, drawn by a child, so that the child will be engaged and see themselves as Sam or Samantha, it's either one, in solving this problem and making these changes. Some critical thinking, thinking is putting on my mom hat, you know, conveying critical thinking skills, both the cognitive piece and then that emotional piece of, you know, looking at how the other person is, whatever the situation may be, and how they're dealing with the situation. How important is it that kids get the non-cognitive piece, sort of like the non-verbal piece of solving a problem, you know, that empathy and those kinds of things? Yeah, I think kids are so much more intuitive than adults, so I think in this, they intuit how to solve a problem. I don't know that they sit down and think, oh, there's a problem and here are my options, but in this book, Sam intuitively knows how to solve the problem just by virtue of being unhappy. Um, I think it just, it comes to him, and I think that's how kids do a lot of problem solving. They're much more intuitive than us adults. Now, logically, I would think, okay, a picture book is something that a parent would share with a child. Um, how do you see the book? Do you see this being used just as a one-on-one -on -one conversation, or do you see it in a broader sense, like a classroom or a library? No, I see it for parents, I see it for educators, I see it for libraries, uh, it's great for a story time. I mean, it's there are going to be more Sam books, and they're going to take place in different venues like schools, libraries, problems to be solved in other venues. So it's going, it's going to have much more application as he or she solves more problems. So yes, I see it definitely as a group reading as well. Now, you know, I as my other hat I wear is for a fa family literacy organization, and one of the things that we often hear is, I love these books and people tell me they're conversation starters so that I can talk to my children about solving problems or empathy or whatever that may be. How do we, I mean, if, but the question that comes back to me is, but I'm not really good at it. Or I really don't know how to ask the question without sounding like I'm pulling it off the page. Do you have materials to help adults in getting the conversation started about solving problems. Yes, actually I have a program that accompanies this. It's called Be a Superhero and the and the parents and, a, and the child sit down. It's got a star chart uh, where they can agree on certain behaviors and then at a period of time the child will engage in those behaviors and then they, he can earn, Sam becomes a superhero at the end because he's powerful. So they can earn pieces of Sam's costume, a crown, a shirt with the superhero logo, a cape, uh, and then they become a superhero when they've mastered whatever level the parents and child decide of these behaviors. And it's, you know, it just depends on what's appropriate for the parent and the child. Now, can you tell us what Sam's powers are without giving away the book? <laughs> uh, Sam, uh, it, I, it will probably give away the book, but Sam makes, I think, the ultimate discovery that we can change our life by changing our own attitude and behavior. And I think that's a lesson for parents as well as children and for educators, librarians, and he teaches his parents. And how many times have we been taught things by our children? Lillian, you know, when it comes to problem solving, you know, I generally tend, being a literal person, tend to focus on the cognitive piece. You know, okay, what steps do I need to take to resolve this? But part of those steps has to be a flip side of, you know, getting a second perspective, what's happening, whether it's empathy or dealing with frustration. How do we convey those kinds of steps or concepts? Because they're very um, abstract, and yet the audience is very literal. You know, they're looking for one, two, three, gone. So how do we deal with helping them with the other piece, that nonverbal, um, emotional piece of solving a problem? Well, I think kids in, are intuitively uh, sense how to solve problems, They're much more intuitive than we are, but um, 
The empathy piece, I think, is what we've been missing lately. Uh, there's been a very recent British study by the, by the government indicating that we need to incorporate empathy into their school curriculums more. There seems to be a lack of that. And I think that plays into how do you solve a problem that involves people? more than yourself. And obviously we're always interacting with other people, but the best way to solve that is to see it from the other perspective, the other person's perspective, to empathize with it. And I, that's uh, the reason that I think empathy is so important, and that's why Sam learns to be empathetic in the book. He sees it from his parents' perspective, and that changes how he sees it and what needs to be done. Now Sam is looking at it from, and the story is told in the relationship between Sam and his parents. How would an educator or a librarian use this in a school environment? Because a home environment's a little different, so how could they use this? Well, again, there'll be more books that'll be taking place in the school environment, but I think it is, the, the underlying theme is about how do you solve a problem, again, that involves other people? How do you interact with other people? How do you, in a sense, uh, get what you want, but also getting what other people want, reach a, reach a consensus, and that involves empathy in any situation, whether it's a classmate, a teacher, a librarian, um, anything like that, a sibling, it all, I think that lesson applies to every human interaction that we make, and, it, and empathy enriches those, those interactions. Well, I'm so glad you were able to join us today. Thanks for telling us okay. the story about thank Sam. Thank you, Terry. It's very nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely.